Hello everybody out there on YouTube. Welcome to part 18. Yeah, I'm gonna go with 18. I could be wrong, it might be 17, but I think it's 18. Of Let's Play Lego Harry Potter years 1 through 4. In the last episode, we completed the first level of year 3. And in this episode, we're gonna do some stuff in Hogwarts, including our first Defense Against the Dark Arts lesson of year 3. Where we get to encounter a creature that we could never imagine. It's Professor Snape, who finally came out of the closet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I offended anyone, but that joke had to be made. I mean... I, and I mean, just look. Okay, I'm sorry. Now I'm really worrying that I might be offending people. It's no concern, though. We have a new spell here, and we can cast it on things like this Bogart, as it's called, or Bogart, in case you're a fan of the work of Humphrey Bogart. And I guess that only Hermione and Ron have to use the spell, because there's not a place up on the board for Harry. But maybe by switching to Harry... Oh no, Hermione and Ron are all we have access to. Where is Harry? And... Oh well. It hardly matters. Ron, of course, sees a spider. Because what a Bogart does is it shows you the thing which you fear more than anything else. And I just hit, a, hit one of four of some kind of thing. Ooh, and hold on. I have Hermione. I'm going to open this cupboard. And that's one, two, three, four. And that gives us... Okay, that gives us the second thing that we need to hit. They are just like books, I guess. Little blue book-like things. Uh, and, you know, I'm getting sidetracked with optional stuff again. This happens a lot with me, as you've undoubtedly figured out by now. And now I can't find the fourth one, though, which makes this whole thing kind of a waste. That's a bummer. Let's just cast Ridiculous. Oops, I spoiled the name of the spell, everybody. Oh, te knows. But we get a gold brick for that. Can't complain too much there. I don't know why I find it necessary to point that out every time, considering that we've gotten one for... Oh, there's that fourth book. Considering we've gotten one for every lesson that we've completed. And what does that get us? Uh, just looks like it's a bunch of studs. That's kind of disappointing, because that's really kind of pointless in story mode. And there's a character token back there, but we can't get it. But what we can get is Pravati Patil, who is also not a Slytherin. A Slytherin would be the most useful thing for me right now. I would actually drop everything to go purchase it. But it's not a Slytherin. She is either a Gryffindor or a Hufflepuff or a Ravenclaw. But definitely not a Slytherin. Uh, so, where are we going next? The game wanted us to come out this way. Here's the ghost. He's going to go over here. So I'm guessing that the path we need to take is also over here. But unfortunately, there's a lock in the way that we need to get rid of. And I don't know if I have the means to do that. But uh, we can cast Ridiculous on this spider. And hopefully that does something for us. It explodes into a key. Perfect. Are there any other cupboards? Or, you know what? It's not important. I'm not going to bother with that. Let's just get the game done. I'm already almost five minutes into the video. Uh, but that opens up a path through the castle that, so far, we haven't had access to. And a lot of stuff here for Fang, or any other digging character. There are others. And we get our first class with a new instructor in this screen. There's also a strength potion here that we can brew, but I don't feel like gathering up the ingredients. Or maybe I have to gather up the ingredients because I am definitely not finding a easy path through that door. 
Perhaps you can help me, instructor. Please? Please? Lumos? Can I do... Can't I do nothing? Doesn't look that way. But we found one of the ingredients. So that's a thing. Only two left to get. Skeleton arm and toothy thingy. And the only approach for these puzzles is to just attack everything in sight. But if I had to guess, I would be wrong, because I would have guessed that that would have had something substantial. Oh, we don't need the potion. We just needed to move that flower pot. Okay, then. That one ingredient we found, of course, will remain found. But this is divination mm. class with Professor I don't know her name. Mm. Hmm. Seriously, I actually don't remember what this mm. professor's name was. It'll come back to me uh -huh. like after, right after I'm done I recording. Know. But she's kind of a quack. I do remember that. Um, she is the divination in Harry Potter is the art of, like, foretelling the future. And in this particular lecture, we are reading tea leaves. At least that's what was going on in the book and the movie. Uh, I would assume that's exactly what's going on here, too. But I need to find two other teacups and move them to their proper location. And here's one of them after I build it, so that's going to be two of three done. And I need the third one. I would guess that it's over here somewhere, just because, you know, one was in the middle of the classroom, one was on the right. And the law of video games tells me that the third and final one should be on the left side of the room. But again, I've been wrong before. I could be wrong still. Okay, maybe these are the ingredients, or maybe it's in this cupboard. Take care of it, Hermione. You gotta start with the hat, moon, thingy, star. And I'm hoping that... Yep, it's right there. Not a problem at all. Holy crap, this might be the first video in this series that actually falls in place under the original time limit. This one's going to be really, really short. Whatever, not a problem. Hmm. Hermione sees the logo for Mac OS X. So she has being a hipster in her future. Uh, Ron has a puzzle from the Riddler. And Harry has a thing. And after it being changed, it's now a doggy. Huh? So he's going to adopt a cute little puppy, right? I mean, what else could it mean? I don't know. Uh, we've got other places to go, though. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We can't go through here, can we? We have to find a way to move these. So now is probably when we need to brew that strength potion. Ingredient number two fell right into our lap. Oh, wait, I see another flower pot. Never mind. I'm not allowed to have any fun. Everything's always got to be solved the easy way. Lots of money f raining from the sky, though. Oh, fine. I'll do it the game's way. I'll play through it and not brew the potion. Ooh, and now that we have this spell, we can uh, get the contents of these chests by casting Ridiculous on the boggarts in them. And I don't know where we're supposed to be going. It's definitely not this way, but since this is a way we haven't been, might as well explore it, right? There's a student in peril. Oh, this is, I think, the clock tower. There's a red brick in here somewhere. We just have to find it. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty short video, as far as I know. So I'm willing to kind I'm kind of willing to do that. Let's move red up onto his perch where he goes. Blue. And green. And yellow. I don't know what that... Oh, that gives us the red brick. Unfortunately, we now need to get up there, which I am assuming we can do by freezing these pixies. I would guess that that will stop the movement on these... Uh, rotating drums. 
And I'm correct in thinking that. So let's go ahead and get this red brick, and if it's anything worthwhile, uh, I can make a detour to Diagon Alley and purchase it. But I don't remember seeing that the one in the clock tower was anything too great. Come on, Hedwig, take it. Thank you. And it'll tell us what we've unlocked. Oh, score times two. That one will be really useful, actually. I will have to make a detour to Diagon Alley to get that, because that is going to double the count of um, of studs that we get. Which means every stud we pick up will count twice toward getting true wizard status. So that one is hugely useful. Uh, so that's going to be a definite must-obtain. And we get Vernon Dursley, who is decidedly not a Slytherin, but I think if he were a wizard, he probably would be, because he's kind of evil. And do you like how, you know, I knew that this would be a short video and I decided to improvise? Watch this, like, actually have a lot of content that I need to take care of. Gold brick? Happy with that. I'm very happy with that, because gold... I like to get at least two to three per video, and there's my two already. And it's quite possible I could get a third one. Anyway, let's get out of the clock tower. There's nothing more to be done here just yet. There will be later on, but... I want to stop by Diagon Alley before I start the next level. Um, so that we can get that thing. And I want that blue one. Come to me. I don't know where we're actually going. And Hedwig is here, so somewhere on this screen there is a red brick as well. Where's nearly Headless Nick? Okay, he's going off this way, so we need to go here. This is taking us to the castle. If it wants us to go somewhere like the Great Hall, then I'm going to assume that that's where the level's going to start, and I'm going to know about where I need to cut it off. Or, perhaps it has us going to the Quidditch field. That also is a distinct possibility. I'm not sure. We'll find out soon enough, though, like I said. And I like year three in this game because when you're exploring Hogwarts, it's all at night. And that is kind of cool. All right, Nick, where are we going? Okay, Nick has us going to Hagrid's place. And I'm guessing that that is the start of the level because we're going out to the forest. I'll go ahead and do it, though. I'll go ahead and go there. We can always exit level if it's not. And what are we having trouble with? Oh, you know what? This is definitely a class because... Well, you'll find out soon enough why this is almost certainly a class. So that's fine. I'm willing to do a class because that's what these Hogwarts interludes are for. And there are typically two of them per year, so it makes sense. It's just following an existing pattern. But uh, this is Buckbeak the Hippogriff. We get to feed him, but there's no food in the bucket. So instead of having a valid educational learning experience, we get to go on a little fetch quest for Hagrid, which, you know, because no one can do anything for themselves in a platformer video game. Never understood that, I guess. I mean, it just kind of comes with the territory of the genre. But, like, if you look at video games, particularly platformers, though I don't necessarily think it's exclusive to the genre, um, I think it is especially true with platformers. No one can do anything for themselves. Ever. Get off me, Pixie. Gotta freeze the Pixie. Because he's going to cause us trouble. And there's a thing to be had here. Ooh. That is very nice. Hermione has a pet cat. So now when we have Hermione, we have access to a character who can dig. Very, very, very nice. And as far as I know, Crookshanks, the cat, can also climb up those tubes that Scabbers can use. Which effectively renders Scabbers completely obsolete. But uh, this is food stuff number one. There are still two more to get. And there's still a lot of this area to explore, so that's not going to be too tough. Get out of here, B. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know where the other food things are. This is actually... From this point forward, this is a blind let's play, so... I got no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I think that these spider webs were, uh... Yep, those are a collectible. And there's nine of them. Oh, the joy. Doesn't look like that's actually a big deal, though, because we've already got five. And we've put essentially no effort into getting them. Can I get up there? Like, can I fut cheese it? I guess not. That can be lifted, but it doesn't accomplish anything. Although, I guess Crookshanks can probably do something for us, because there's a dig spot here. I'd like to think there's, like, a ladder to be had, and yep, these guys are going to be awesome and build us a ladder. Love these guys. My favorite NPCs in the game, because all they do is just... They just do work for us. So we need to grow the li lily pads and get over here. And there's another food thing, but I don't want to get that yet, because I'm not capable of doing things in a reasonable way. There you go, spider. Take care of that problem. And, um, I don't know if I've actually discussed this, but if you use, like, the trick where you hold down X to target something, it'll automatically target it with the appropriate spell, whatever that might be. Which, um, you know, in the event that you need a spell like Ridiculous, it'll use it automatically, so you don't have to worry about navigating through your spells and finding the one that's appropriate for the situation. And what happened to the food? There it is. Yeah, these games are also pretty good about, like, if you drop something that into a place where it's unobtainable, it'll just kind of respawn where it needs to be. I'm going to put that down, because there's a spider web to collect here. And, of course, we need to get all nine of them to get something, which is probably just going to be studs, unfortunately. But we'll never know if we don't do it, right? And there's number eight... I'll come back. Oh, I see where number nine is. Perfect. I mean, I guess it's also possible that those will give us one of the food items. It seems reasonable enough. Nope, just studs, but one of them's purple. I wish I'd gone back to Diagon Alley already to get the times two multiplier. Would have been very nice to have. What did moving that tree do exactly? I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, I need to find that third chicken leg. And I have covered that sector. Uh, I figure if I break the level into sectors, it'll... Oh, I see something glowing. That's going to be where it is. That's hidden pretty well, actually. I'm impressed. Can I get the blue still? I can. Perfect. Uh, so we take this back, and we're going to be done with this lesson and probably the video. And I can't complain too much. This has worked out to about 20 minutes. That's about where I like them. So once we get this done, I'm going to make a quick stop to Diagon Alley, buy the score times 2 multiplier, and we're going to be pretty much using that from here on out um, until we get another <laughs> multiplier. And three gold bricks, which three gold bricks in 20 minutes ain't too bad at all. Uh, but we get treated with another cutscene. And the cool thing about the Hippogriff is when we learn how to handle them... Well, you'll see soon enough. But basically, we can hop up on his back. And being that Hippogriffs are winged creatures, we can now fly. Which shouldn't be anything special, because Harry could already fly a broom. And it's not like you can play Quidditch on a Hippogriff, so I don't see what the big deal is. But uh, what Malfoy just did there probably isn't going to work too well because the Hippogriff is a proud creature, and if you mistreat it, it's not going to be nice to you. So I don't know where we're going now, but it's clearly this way. I would reckon that we're going into the cast, back into the castle, um, probably like the Great Hall or something of that sort. I would be, like I said, I want to see where we're going before I call it a video, because that's pretty much going to determine how confident I am that we've done 
everything there is to do. Although there's the other hand of the equation where it's been 20 minutes, I probably should just call it here so that I don't waste too much time going to Diagon Alley and buying the point multiplier. In fact, yeah, I've just started a level. So all the other students are going to have fun and go to the Hogsmeade Village, but Harry's not allowed to go. But our old pals, Fred and George, who we've only just been introduced to because they just briefly appeared in passing and never in any substantial role, are going to help us out. This is the Marauder's Map, or the Soliton Radar, if, if you prefer. And the village we need to go to is there. Does this count as a level? It does not. Perfect. All right. So if I go through here, I'm not starting a level. I can go back up to the Great Hall. And I think that's exactly where it has me heading. So we're going to call it a video here, I think. But before we do that, we're going to head over to the Leaky Cauldron. So that we can go to Diagon Alley. I'm definitely buying that point multiplier thing. It will become extremely useful once we start playing levels. I don't know what Professor Quirrell is doing in Diagon Alley. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be dead, but whatever. Uh, so we go to Ilop's Owl Emporium, and the um, cheats that we can buy are upstairs. Score times two, extremely useful. I could buy Fall Rescue. It would, I guess, be nice to have, but I don't want to spend the money on it right now. Um, especially since money is going to start coming to us twice as fast. And there are other multipliers you can unlock, and so you can get a times 4, a times 8, a times 16, and by the way, they stack. So you can get like times 3,000 on your multiplier, which is absolutely ridiculous and completely game-breaking. But the times 2 alone will be really helpful for the time being. I'll go ahead and turn that on just so I can show it. It's not... It does exactly what you'd expect to do. I'll pick up the silver, and I'll go, my score will go up 20. Just like that. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be enough material for one video, I think. In the next part, we're going to start the next level. And then... Yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. But we're going to get these studs twice as fast, so true wizard status is going to come a lot more easily from here on out. But anyway, I'm Homestar92, and I will see you guys next time. Later.